Good morning. Jason Lapidus here. I'm uh, going to do some live inking while I relax this morning, get a little bit of work done. And I hope you're well on this beautiful Sunday. You can check out our comics on our website, <laughs> group7.c. No, got that wrong already. Group7comics.ca, where you can pick up the last couple copies of Group of Seven Most Secret Tale. Peregrines, parts one and two in Group of Seven Comics, issues seven and eight. This collects the first six, and there's seven and eight. Nine is on its way, as well as lots of other goodies. But this morning, I'm inking a piece that's before you. I started inking yesterday. It's a nice accident that I will fix in post-production with some white media or digitally if I have to. Well, I'm going to work today with Hunt 102, try to learn how to use it. And the only way I know how to use things, the only way I know how to learn how to use things is to dive in head first and hurt myself. <laughs> Make a million mistakes in the process. I'm going to just turn my volume down. This is driving me a little nuts. I've got lots of echo and delay. There we go. Anyway, throw a comment in the chat if you're hanging out too. And uh, I'll start drawing and make it as big a mess as I possibly can. I've already messed up. I dipped it too far in, so it's uh, there's ink all the way up the pen. So my hands are gonna be black to start. <laughs> it's just one rookie mistake after another. It's a real joy. I'm a big subscriber to the idea that you really have to get your miles in to get good at anything. And I know I won't get my miles if there isn't pressure on me to, to do it. Like I won't just practice for fun. I'll practice for the sake of learning. I kind of have to have a, a purpose, a reason I'm learning something. And the reason I learned to make comics was because my good friend Chris wanted to make the comic together. So to, for me to be able to participate in that, I need to be able to, I needed to learn how to make comics. And so the first comics that we made were uh, quite amateurish for, you know, from an art point of view. And there's a charm to that, I imagine, <laughs> but it's not charming for me. Anyway, here we go. I got this warmed up. So let's make a million mistakes and get going. I'm finding my light to be a challenge. I moved it for the camera this morning. Yeah, I'm not warmed up at all. There are exercises that one could and should do before you start inking. And I do not know those exercises. I don't practice exercising before I start, but I can see from the quality of my line that I'm not ready to draw. So I'm going to attack this with lots of reservation and hesitation, which will make my line even worse. This might be the worst idea I've had all day to do this. I normally draw with a pen or a brush pen and 
I'm interested in changing my technique to get a more desirable line. I know I have to log thousands of hours to get things to look the way I like and to gain a certain facility with a tool. Fortunately, this original piece is not going to be seen by anybody up close, I'm imagining. It's just going to go into my archive. So whatever mistakes are on here are not going to be visible in the final product because the final product is production art, which is a digital file. And I can change whatever I need to change digitally after I finished drawing, which is a little bit of a liberating thought. Because any error I make can be removed. up in my Jackson's ears, but I did. first started making comics I was really struck by the, the differences in the tools and how much I had relied on pencil drawing and, and uh, just the, the wrist movements that go with drawing in pencil I didn't realize that poles with brushes and poles with pens had such a different uh, result and Drawing with pencil, and that uh, I would really favor either drawing upward or, or pulling downward, with, depending on the tool and yeah, its relationship with the paper. And this is definitely a reason for me not to want to work digitally. I love dragging these tools across the paper.
Drawing becomes a very tactile experience. I'm always really going to run my hand over an area that is wet. I do like how this one turned out, though. Let's do some this uniform, perhaps. So for anyone who uh, has seen this at conventions before or is familiar with the Group of Seven comics content, you might have seen an image like this in the past. This has been our business card and our show banner, like at a convention. It's been a, the banner at our conventions uh, for the last two years. And I'm redrawing it. And repurposing that drawing. The original one ends uh, at about this point. Oh, you can't see my hand. Right about here. And I don't have access to any more information on the original drawing outside of the original trim. And it's now become a problem because I want to repurpose that image, but I don't have any more image to play with. So I'm, I've enlarged the original and I'm redrawing it and updating a couple characteristics of the characters. Found a few errors in it. And I'm fixing those. And of course, making new ones. As well, I'm trying to develop my own consistency with the kinds of marks I make, the intentionality of those marks. And how those marks mean something specific. Like, for instance, when you see an artist like Mike Mignola 
draw the rock. He only has to make a few marks on the object for the reader to understand that it's rock. And I think that's awesome. So I'm trying to figure out what, what marks do I make? What marks work in the language I'm trying to use? Visual language. kid my dog just showed up how are you you good <laughs> i thought i closed the door oh buddy and he's gone I'm just going to close the door again. I guess the word I was looking for before was textures. And I love how simplistically Magnolia creates different textures with ink. Which I guess would be oh, his opposite might be another one of my favorite artists, Art Adams or Arthur Adams, who's amazing with textures and does it in a more ornate fashion.
So I'm trying to get some ink flow happening with this pen nib. And it just doesn't always go when I want it to. Not a fan <laughs> of the work that is, not of the pen. The pen's great. But my lines, I just don't have the control I need yet. I know I'm going to smudge. Should still work. I think this is one of the reasons those drawing challenges are so good for you. In this case, good for me. Because like a monthly drawing challenge, like in Inktober, because it can get me to draw with a new tool every day. By that I mean draw with a new tool for the month daily.
and that would be a great time for me to really bump up my ink nib drawing pen nib Certain parts of the drawing, I'm going to take a brush to, to fill in all the black. So when I'm getting doing these little scratches, it's just trying to get the ink to flow. And not like these scratches are going to be seen later. It could be that I need to add a little water to my ink, help it flow, but I, I don't have enough miles using these tools to know when they're behaving badly or when I'm using them wrong. It could be of a poor quality. It could need some maintenance.
So that was too hard. Got some good splatter. Sorry, that was out of focus.
Boy, oh boy. I'm not sure why I thought this was going to be easy. Oh, I know why. Because I'm an ass. So a couple of different textures I'm going to have to convey. Fabric, hair, they're, it's wool fabric. They're wearing like wool hockey sweaters, dyed black. Hair, metal, wood, canvas on their web gear, and some leather. And gloves and such. All right, I need a break for breakfast. This did not go as smoothly as I planned. <laughs> oh, but I appreciate you taking the time to watch, hang out with me. Oh, I ruined that. I left this thing. Uh, sitting next to a tissue, got stuck. So I got to do some cleanup. I need to eat something for sure, and uh, come back at this with, I guess, a brush. I'm filling lots of the blacks. Maybe do some, some more work with felted pen just to go faster and get the piece done. So it's finished by lunch. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Come back to watch. Previously in X-Men, uh, Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click like, subscribe to the channel, all those good things. Thank you very much.